Hello, everyone. Good morning. Hello. Good Hello, good morning, good evening. I see that we have people from all around. So it's very, very exciting. Uh, my name is Betty Finkelstein and I'm the marketing manager at Danziger. And I'm so excited to have you all with us on our first Danziger Live for 2022. Uh, yeah! <laughs> for those of you who are newcomers, uh, Danziger is a breeder company for the past 68 years. And you most probably are familiar with a few of our leading varieties, such as uh, Excellence and Million Stars, uh, Gypsophila, Scoop Scabiosa, Scabiosa, Paintball, Casperia, and many, many others. Uh, today, I have the pleasure of having a wonderful host, Alison Bradley, and the amazing Hanukkah Frankema uh, to join us today and speak about one of the most interesting topics in our industry, the Valentine's Day. Uh, so today, Hanukkah will share with us beautiful, beautiful designs, uh, commercial designs for Valentine's, and I'm sure you'll get wonderful tips uh, for how to prepare uh, your great Valentine's. Uh, we will uh, start uh, with both Alison and Hanukkah, and then we'll move on to a Q&A session when you all can ask whatever pops to mind. But I must say that you can ask uh, in the chat chat box uh, in the Zoom and, and the Zoom and the webinar, and also on Facebook, any question you want, and we'll do our best to answer uh, immediately as fast as we can. Um, I remind you all that we have our Facebook page, The Danziger Live. I'm happy to say that uh, the numbers are getting more and more, and we're very excited to have you all with us. This is a great platform for you to share your work, to inspire, to get inspired, to ask questions. Uh, this uh, web uh, Facebook page is managed by Alison Bradley. Uh, use it. Uh, we're also uh, updating there all of our webinars. Um, so it will be good to be uh, up to date with every everything new. Uh, before we start, uh, I would like to share with you a short video of our, about one of our products, the Scoop Scaviosa. Um, to show you how it all begins in the field. So let's discover Scoop. Welcome to a world of Scoops, a focal flower galore. If you haven't used these yet, let me show you why these are such go-to flowers. These are outstanding flowers that truly add a sense of elegance and sophistication to any design mainly due to its long, slim stems and its exquisite and minute petals. The world of scoops is enchanting because there's lots of colors, shapes and textures you can choose from when designing. We have multiple varieties from our scoop, focal and bonbon. Pick hues that range from lilacs, raspberry, lavender, strawberry, blackberry and white tones. One characteristic about this flower is that this is actually its cutting stage, but once you cut it and hydrate the flower, it evolves into this massive and detailed bloom. It's amazing to see how big the head of each variety is. For example, this is our scoop, but look at the size of this focal scoop. It's interesting that although they look delicate, they have very sturdy, solid stems that have a vase life of 10 days. Plus, I love when scoops have quirky stems that let me play with movement and spontaneity. With scoops, the higher the better. When designing, I like to place them above all other flowers to add negative space to my composition. Here, the flower can have a focal flower moment and catch your attention right away. Thank you, Jonathan. So, Alison and Hanukkah, the stage is all yours. Uh, go ahead, have fun, and create your magic. Okay, thank Brandon. you. Um, welcome to 2022, and welcome to my good chum, Hanukkah Frankema. Hanukkah, um, for those of you who don't know her, and it's kind of hard to imagine who in the floral industry doesn't know her, but Hanukkah is an, has an amazing talent um, and she is currently the champion of the Netherlands, correct? Yeah? Yes. And you're going to represent your country, a big, a big dream come true for you. 
at hopefully the Europa Cup in August. If that's yes. God willing and COVID staying away from us, that yeah, yeah that, that will happen. Um, yeah. You are known as the wire lady. Yes. I wonder why. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I use a lot of wire, lots of different techniques with wire. So I have done some things with wire uh, also. Oh yeah, you can see it here. Go. It's my private stock of wire. Yeah, I have a really good technical guy behind the scenes, my uh, lovely boyfriend, Nico, who is also my photographer. So I'm a spoiled florist. Yes, but yes. Um, yeah, I really love to use wire. And then all of a sudden they just give me the name, the Iron Lady. So it like happened and now people hire me to show them the techniques I do with wire so it like sticks on me <laughs> a bit <laughs> yeah but it's, it's almost like you create floral jewelry I think when I say floral jewelry I don't mean floral jewelry I mean everything becomes jewel like with the creation of the wires and your perfect use of color you've got a thing about using color that's for sure so um you know, this year in particular, there's always this time of year for Valentine's Day. You don't have a shop any longer, do you? No. no. So you work uh, really as a freelance florist and you're teaching, demonstrating, doing exhibitions and da 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 da. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Which is definitely far more challenging and more enjoyable, I think, than the shop. If I remember rightly, you were. Yeah, well, I really enjoyed having, having a shop and I teach a lot to all the florists. I have I organize my own master classes and I travel normally all over the world to teach. So I think for me, it was really good to have the shop so I know what people want to learn. And I can still like keep, spin my mind around the concept of sometimes that it has to be commercial as well. So mm -hmm. for today, I have, of course, I couldn't help myself. I've done some bigger things. <laughs> some uh, show pieces for the windows because I got so many beautiful flowers yesterday and well I just couldn't help myself but we're going to dive into the commercial things as well yeah. and uh, I want to make sure that everybody understands that you can also make it smaller of course I want to do something special for you tonight um, but of course you can always make smaller things uh, next to the big one in your window for example yeah so the big question is, as a florist, with a former shop owner, you know, traditionally Valentine's Day is bigger in some countries than in others. Is it big in the Netherlands? I think it's quite big in the Netherlands. It was one of the busiest days in the shop always. Sure. But traditionally, it's usually um, people start thinking roses. And certainly, you know, there's a theory in the floristry industry that men can only think roses because they're kind of programmed to think roses, if you yeah. like. Yeah. But this year, there's an interesting issue insofar as there's a shortage of roses because caused much by COVID, but also by the gas increase in prices as well. Yeah. So your challenge, if you like, that you've taken on, good girl, is to come up with something that would be so yummy that we'd encourage people to think out with the box so out of the box and thinking about using different flowers in different ways to still get that message across yeah well it's uh, i've had a shop for 10 years and sometimes you ha had so many clients in the shop that you run out of roses yeah. so we always had some other uh, bouquets already made so it's not i think half of the time they really wanted to have roses but in our shop it was quite normal to like sell the really uh, uh, um, modern bouquets and uh, experimental bouquets and decorative bouquets with frames in it and sometimes it was not even with roses so um, I think it also depends a bit on the clients you have but yeah. I always say if you don't have it in your shop you don't sell it so you just put it there make something else uh, without roses you can make so many other things with so many other beautiful flowers sure I think that's that's absolutely true um, We've got, because this is a webinar, we've got the facility to ask the audience. Now we're getting word in here from the Ukraine, from Kenya, from Canada, a lot from Canada, from the USA, from Colombia, good Lord. Oh, the Monterey Bay in California. Ay, caramba, that would be nice. Um, Berkshire in the UK. Um, 
what I have to ask you people, and Jonathan's going to help me here, I hope, my, my friendly neighbourhood expert, can you put up a question, question number one, and everybody who's on Zoom can now answer this question, which is, are you planning traditional bouquets for Valentine's Day? And it's a simple yes or no. So if you could do that just now. Oh boy, here you go. Oh, wow. Oh, heavens to Mercator. Okay, well, this is interesting. At least I'm finding it interesting so far. Of course, the, the, the figures are multiplying, so we'll wait and see. So Hanukkah, over to you. What ideas have you got for us? Can we start with commercial? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. We, I thought it would be a good idea to start with a bit small. Okay, cool. Yes. Well, at I the moment, the first one. they're saying here, 66% of the people who are watching are saying no to what would be traditional Valentine's Day. And 34% are saying yes. So that's quite interesting. Oh boy. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, that looks gorgeous. I'm in love with this already. So send it well, over. <laughs> um, when you asked me to do this and you said, well, we want to have some commercial things. I thought, well, what did we sell a lot in the shop? Um, and uh, this is a really good example of what we sold a lot. It's really cheap wooden um, shape. You can also have a square or you can also have round shapes, more things like this. It's a very cheap base. So things like this you can have as well. Um, and this is something that we did a lot in our shop. We made a lot of frames in advance. So we had a huge pile of frames already waiting for us to put flowers in. So if you have really busy days, you only need to put the flowers in. So it saves you a lot of time when you're like really high in all your orders and the people that are in the shop. So we normally had like 20 of these already made. We had two of them filled with flowers in the shop. And as soon as we sold them, you could just put some flowers in and then you can sell it again really quickly. Of course, it's, it's some time to make it, but if you do it in advance, it can save you a lot of time sure. and it can save you a lot of hours uh, uh, working late yeah, because not everyone is busy all the time through the year. You've got opportunities during the year to stockpile materials that you can put together when times are busy. Yeah. Yeah. Totally okay, agree. Okay, good. And so this is and, a wooden well, base. This is like the medium size, but if, if uh, I will show you these as well. Okay. Because these are like the little small commercial. Oh, ones. I love. Ah. Oh, so, very commercial. So what we always did in the shop, and this will be a little bit the thing I want to talk to you about during this live stream, we always had like the wow things in the shop, a really yeah. big wow thing. Of course, uh, this example, you can make much bigger. Yeah. But we always sold a lot of the small things because we had a really big thing in the shop. People are talking about it. They say, oh, it looks amazing. And then we had like a table full with uh, like smaller varieties, smaller brothers and sisters of the big one. And sure. we sold a lot of the small ones. And then not only one, but they just bought two or three and they gave it also to their neighbor or to their mother and their mother-in-law. So we always called it satellite sale. So you have a big item in your shop yeah. and it takes the attention of the clients. Yeah. But of course, not everybody can have a big thing in their house or it's maybe too expensive for them. And then yeah. they will easily buy the smaller ones. So. We've got there the wooden base, and I see you've got glass tubes in, yeah? Yeah, Have you glass tubes. Are the glass tubes glued in position or are they drilled in position? No, I have fixed them with the aluminium wire, uh, or I've used the copper wire. wire. You can do it in uh, several ways, I think. Yeah. But this these is are actually... great. I think they would be great for restaurants as well. Hanukkah. Yeah, yeah, and maybe a little bit lower. I will put the small ones out. I will show you how the base is made because this is something very, very commercial for the shop. So yeah. this is actually the base. It's just a really simple wooden shape. It can be round, it can be anything you like. Yeah. And then I drilled in a piece of really thick aluminum wire. Uh -huh. I use it a lot, the thick aluminum wire because my next best friend is the drilling machine. 
And this is the really thick aluminum wire. So these Obviously. wires are for me often the base of a frame or a structure or uh, something like this, because it's really nicely bendable. It's really yeah. flexible, but in, in the same way, it's really strong as well. Yeah. So every time I'm going somewhere, I always try bring some thick aluminum wire. Yeah. And of course I want it to be very beautiful and elegant. So I covered it with the drilling machine um, with the beautiful bullion wire, big uh -huh. bullion wire. So it looks more elegant. Yeah. So this is the base you start with. And then I made some really lovely hearts. So I make these myself. Yeah. Um, also something you can very nicely make in advance. So if you're really busy, it can be very good if you have a lot of these already made in stock. Sure. Of course, we have Valentine's Day now, but I also make a lot of uh, leaf shapes with this technique. It's a very nice technique and it looks really delicate and it's all handmade. So every heart has a bit different shape, but I really like to show people that it's handmade. Yeah, it's individual, which is part of the, yeah. the bonus these days. And, and actually they would be great for weddings as well. Of course. Beautiful, I love it. Mm. So you yeah. can see it goes, it's really easy. And I, I don't want to have a lot of straight lines. So I want to keep mm. some movement in it and some nice lines. Yeah. And I think uh, the scabiosa scoops are really beautiful in this kind of work. I've also used some talinum in them, some talinum long jong. And of course, if you want to keep it a bit cheaper, uh, because I have beautiful fern heads here as well, uh, mm -hmm. you can use some cheaper flowers as well. This is just to give you an idea, but you can make like a thousand of varieties with this. Yeah, actually in the little video about um, the varieties of, from Danziger of the Scabiosa, um, yeah, you could sell that girl. I think that girl was actually in love with Scoop. I think she could have probably dated the Scoop the way she was going on. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> certainly looked that way. Yeah, so oh. I thought I was going to show you mm. how you make the hearts because these questions will, I, I'm sure they will come. Yeah, so it's better just to make it. So I make my own shape out of the aluminium wire. Uh -huh. uh, I teach a lot of frames and technical uh, master classes and never expect your first heart or your first leaf to be really beautiful you have to practice it a couple of times yeah but you have to fold it really tight in the middle first and then you make a nice loop here and and many florists in holland they say well i don't have time to do this and yeah, yeah. it's too expensive but if you practice it a lot you get faster and faster in it yeah, exactly and if you make it in advance, it can save you a lot of time. And I think it's still the case that you need to be different as a florist and you need Thank to show you. people what you can do and have special things in your shop. Yeah. Yeah. You have to stand out from the crowd. You have to yes. be different from the supermarkets. You have to be an individual for sure. Yes. I totally agree. So we have the bullion wire. So we're yeah. going to use uh, the crutching technique. Okay. Many people think you have to like cover it like this. But the aluminum wire is very slippery, so that doesn't work. So we take off a lot of the bullion wire. And the hearts are a little bit bigger than the leaves I normally make, but I'm not sure how many you can have from one roll of bullion wire. But when I make the small leaves, I can make 30 leaves out of one uh, roll of bullion wire. So it's quite a lot. Good economical stuff, says a Scotswoman to a Dutch woman. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if you if you use these a lot in your shop, um, you need to know how much money goes in. Yeah, of course, absolutely. And always make sure you calculate something for your exclusivity. Yeah, yeah, very important. So if you use the crushing technique, you you can just fold it around your heart shape. So it's quite easy and quite fast like this. So you have it closed with the bullion wire, but you can also use them open like this. You can use both of them. You can make a mix and you, know, yeah. you can just, this is a bit cool. faster of course, but I really like it with the bullion wire. So Me I too. always try to fix some extra bullion wire around it mm -hmm. to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. 
I think techniques are very important, not only for me because I'm doing a lot of competitions, uh, but also for shop work. Because what we did a lot of times in our shop, we had like a hotel, uh, we had a doctor, we had a dentist, we had people who had arrangements every week. And we had a lot of these arrangements like going everywhere. So we used an arrangement like this sometimes 10 times before we sold it in the shop. Uh, so that's why I think it's really worth the time and uh, to give it a lot of attention to make it perfectly uh, in a technical way because you have to move it around a lot. Yeah, of course, yeah. it's, it's, it is some time to make it, but if you can put it in several companies, then you yeah. get the money out of it. Absolutely so this, true. Get a lot in the shop. Some of the biggest names I know do that as well. We've got a question here. Oh my goodness, someone is on from Peru. Oh, Paddington Bears home, but put that to one side. Uh, hi, Harika from Karina. About how much bullion wire does it take to cover the thick aluminium wire in that single piece, for example? So that's actually covering the aluminium wire i think um i always use aluminium wire well this is the silver one but sometimes you can also spray paint it in pink yeah. so you, then you don't need to use a lot of bullion wire because it's i think it's fine if you don't cover it totally but i think it uh for um all these inside if it was less than one roll of bullion wire excellent yeah. okay Oh, and Tina Koskinen's on from Finland. Hi, Tina. Um, okay, great. I love this. And so everyone should have their electric drill to hand very quickly. Do you know, you could be sitting making them while you're watching the television at night. You know, you could be making your love hearts when you're doing nothing else. Yeah, I always have my favorite Netflix series on and I'm sitting on the couch making a lot of the hearts. Yeah. Leaves, but That's also brilliant. the drilling machine technique. I do it a lot sitting on the couch when the children are sleeping, you can, I, I have made miles and miles of them, but yeah. this is also not only for, for shop work, but also for my freelance work. I always make a lot of these things in advance because when I'm really busy, it saves me a lot of time. I can just directly use them for framework. So it's also as a freelancer, really good to work in advance. Yeah. I mean, you really, the correct way to work would be to stockpile things so they're ready to rock when you need them you yes know? because it's actually also, it's also good for your mind you know you have a lot of things already organized oh, yeah. and it, it saves you lots of stress and time so yeah. i'm grabbing the next thing because i have a, a couple so we I need know. some time <laughs> yeah i knew this was going to happen folks because yeah it's like this <laughs> I'd said that stand still. Um, well, while Hanuk is a way to get that, can I just ask another question? Jonathan, if you're there, my darling, the mystery man, we have another uh, question for you. And it's, what is your consumer's average spend on a Valentine bouquet? So we've broken it down to between 30 and $50 US or Euro, because the the rate's very similar, 51 to 70 USD to Euro, 71 to 90 USD to Euro, or 90 plus. Now, I, I know a very a wonderful friend of mine, and I know that she doesn't sell Valentine's unless it's over 90, way over 90. So um, it's interesting to see, uh, because you make to suit your own customer base, that's for sure. So that. Um, that's going on all oh, Hanukkah. I see now this is it. If you could just package that up and send it straight to me, that will do <laughs> fine. I will have it, you know, because I never, do you ever get roses or a Valentine's Day gift like that? Do you ever get flowers for Valentine's Day? I did. Did you? Yeah, of course. Oh. I have a really romantic boyfriend. Ah, uh, Nico. Yeah, you need to come over to Scotland, darling. Oh boy. Okay, so the results of that are that forty-two percent sell between thirty and fifty uh, euro. Thirty percent sell between fifty-one and seventy. Seventy-one ninety. That's twenty-one percent, and only seven percent sell over ninety. Um, 90 usd or, or euros interesting okay hanaka over to you darling oh i love it mm. so as this is again made with a wooden base okay 
So um, I use a lot of wood in my uh, bases. So this is something I, this shape I draw myself and I took a saw and I made a shape my, for myself. And then I made it with uh, the drilling machine, of course. I made holes in it, but look, we're going to talk about bigger things, but also some commercial things. And look, this is, this is the small baby. Okay. And I on purpose didn't fill oh! it with the flowers yet. So you can see what's underneath here. So I've used the small tubes here. I just mm -hmm. drill holes in the wood so you can put the tubes in. And I think this is also a really nice example of something you can reuse really easily because you can Beautiful. just take the tubes out, clean them, and then fill them later with other flowers as well. Um, so for this heart, I've used a mix of different scooped gabiosas. I think I had seven varieties or something. Wow. Um, well, and of course I'm the iron lady, so I could not resist making a lot of uh, the copper um, aluminium wires. Yeah. Put it, I've drilled it with the copper bullion wire. Not a lot, just a little layer to make it a little bit more elegant, more chic, more like jewelry, like you talk yeah, about yeah. it. Um, and then you make some really nice lines. So I drilled some holes on the outside of the wood. You can see it in the small one. And then you can just make a really nice shape oh, yeah. Yeah. and lines around all the mixed scoops, gabiosas that are in the arrangement. Yeah. And I think it's, I always like it when you have really like a, a round shape in your heart. Um, so I think the wires make the shape look really elegant. And I really love to use vines. So I've used a couple of uh, Passiflora wines. Uh, I had some still in our garden. So I'm very lucky florists to have a very big garden. I use a lot of vines out of the garden. And I think it changes the character of an arrangement really quickly. If you use nice vines, you get lots of layers, lots sure. of depth in it. So um, it's just with one type of flower. I, I'm sometimes known for using lots of flowers in the mix, but I can yeah. really, I think this is really beautiful as well. It's the subtlety of the shading in the Scabiosa scoop. I think it's just absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Do you know, yeah, it reminds shading. me of like crushed velvet or something like that. It's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And of course, we took some pictures already from the work. So later we're going to post a lot of uh, pictures from the work because yeah. it's sometimes hard to see online. Uh, so I think in the next couple of days, we're going to post a lot of things. Uh, so they can have close up yeah. some information about what kind of scoops are inside. So I think uh, if people have any questions about how they look, they can look at the pictures later as well. There's one question has come in. They're loving this. Can I just tell you everybody's loving this. But there's a question come in from and I'm going to try and say this name. And please don't get upset if I get it wrong. Hanukkah knows what my pronunciation can be like. But this is from, I think, Annalise uh, Baldwin. And she's asking, do you offer online masterclasses because of the difficulty of, um, tra you know, traveling Perfect. these days? Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, I have a couple next week. We do it online, uh, um, ex yeah. especially last year. We did a lot of uh, uh, online masterclass. It, it's a bit the same like this. My boyfriend is often here, and so I can show the details really well. If, if you have some close-ups. Uh, so we do it, yeah. But not, I don't do really big groups. It's more one-on-one -on -one because it's yeah. really hard if you do it with a really big group because when you get a lot of questions, it can be a little bit chaotic. So it's more one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. And sometimes people organize a group of people in a classroom on the other side of the world, and then yeah. you have a group of people doing the masterclass but it, it, every time it's a bit different it depends on what people want but we do it yeah there's another question in and this is the classic question can i just explain to people this this webinar is global so we're going out all over the world so asking for costings on something is an impossible thing to answer properly but what this uh let me just check where are you I think it's Judy, well, someone has asked me how much it costs to make the base. Now, put the flowers to one side because that is all to do with transport. How much does it cost in the Netherlands to make the base? 
And well, I, think, I think the base would start no. with 150 euros, something yeah. like this. Not that much, no. Okay, brilliant. They're loving this. You've yeah, got... you like it? People from Pakistan, people from... Oh, there you go. Um, from Lily Billen says, hi and thanks. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Great. The... I will... Shall I get the next one then? Go for it. Go for it. Go and get the next one. Okay. So can I ask another question while um, we're doing this theatrical performance between us here? Um, so here's your next question. Jonathan, do you want to put this up for me, darling? Hi from Colombia. Um, is... Are your advance orders for Valentine's Day higher or lower this year? So is it, have you got more advance orders this year or lower advance, or is it roughly the same as last year? Oh, interesting. Mm. Okay. It's ongoing. Okay, so will we end it there. Oh, here, share the results. Okay, so higher than last year, 30%, lower than last year, 33%, that's a wash, and roughly the same as last year, 37%. So that's like, um, yeah, that sounds like an even split to me. Okay, Crispedia paintball, if I ever yes. thought. Oh. Yeah, I, I really love them. I use them a lot. Uh, I know a lot of floors don't really like yellow, but I really like yellow. Uh, it's a very funny story because it's it's like um, the color of yellow has so many different symbolisms in it, but I just like yellow. I think it's a really happy color and I really love Paintball Crispedia. I use it a lot in my work. Yeah. Um, I think the best part of it that they dry in so nicely. They don't yeah. lose the color and they will hold for years and years and years. So I have in the past made a lot of wall decorations and I just let them dry. The only thing you have to think about a little bit is that the stems will shrink a little bit when they're starting to dry. So yeah. make sure you fix them correctly. But I really love them. You can like bend them really nicely. Uh, they dry in really nicely. You can uh, use them in uh, really strong lines. So yeah, it's really one of my favorites. Uh, flowers to work with uh, these days. Um, I've made this arrangement with them. Of course, leading the whole arrangement is uh, the uh, Paintball Crispedia. Um, I have here a base made out of styropor, and it's actually uh -huh. a leftover from some containers I got in. Uh -huh. I think it's for florists very uh, a good idea to try to reuse your trash or try to look at things in a different way instead of just throwing it out directly. Um, so I cut out a heart shape from the foam and then I've used candle wax to cover it. And it's very commercial uh, way of working. It's mm -hmm. very cheap because this was made out of leftovers from, of course, the transport of the containers, but also the candles. They were really old candles. Yeah. They were a little bit pinkish. So yeah. it's it actually waste, but it looks really exclusive. And my clients always really loved all the arrangement with candle bags because for us florists, it's nothing new. But for clients, it's always, wow, and it was so special and mm -hmm. it looks really nice. So I think it's very commercial for shop work to have something totally different. You won't find this in a supermarket or at a gas station because it's very special. Yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, so, so, okay. I'm so this is a question from uh, Lee who is saying, do the, the do you dry the stems before you insert them in the part? Um, styrofoam or do you, do you put them in fresh? Yeah, but this one is made on um, Oasis, the bio uh, Oasis from Smithers Oasis. So I cut out a heart shape from uh, the foam at first, and then I have the wet Oasis inside. So it's now fresh, okay. but normally when I would make it dry, 
then I would try to dry them first. Just leave them a couple of days without the water to let yeah. the stem shrink. And then you can just easily uh, use it in your um, arrangements. The stems are great. There's, I mean, the paintball variety, they're so strong, those stems. They're really gorgeous. Well, this is also one of the examples when we had like the, the works for hotels and other things. Uh, when the flowers got back, always the uh, paintball crispidio was still beautiful. So we always reuse them a lot as well. So they're really worth the money, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And the flower, is that more um, scabiosa? Yeah. And yeah. it's a very beautiful one. I'm not oh. sure if you can see it really well, but there's a little bit of pink in it. Yeah. I think it's called French vanilla. I didn't have this color before, oh. uh, but it's a very beautiful color. Uh, I think it matches uh, the candle wax really nicely. Beautiful. And I really love yellow and soft pink. I think it's a really nice color combination. And uh -huh. for me, Valentine's Day doesn't always have to be red. I think it's fine if you use other colors. We didn't use only red in the shop when we uh, uh, were selling a lot of things. And then just to give it some extra detail, just two small Valenopsis. Uh, I think they are always beautiful because they have so much different colors inside them. So I think it's a beautiful uh, uh, detail, extra detail in the heart shape. Um, so it's uh, uh, on foam, it's on wet foam. And I made first a layer with the Craspedia balls, and then I did an extra layer on top. And here on these two parts, it's even, I think like a third layer, because I think it's really nice if you have the round, like a ball shaped heart instead of a flat one. Yeah. I think it looks much more elegant. Yeah, absolutely. Um, here we go. Uh, let me just go back. Someone's asked what, can, do you know what the gauge of the strong aluminium wire is, please? The thick one is five millimeters. Five millimeters. Yeah, and uh, okay. the, the, the thin one that I use for the hearts is two millimeters. Okay, thank you. That's great. They're loving it. Do you smear the wax over the styrofoam when semi-warm? I can answer that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a huge pan when, yeah. where, what they normally use to make candles. So it's like hot water and then you have a pan on top and then yeah. you melt it all, so it's really safe. Some people just put it on fire, but it can be tricky and it's getting really hot. Yeah. And then you just brush it on. Yeah. And what I normally did, I just, I had like 10 of these already on the table and then I just brushed everything yeah. and then did it really quickly. Because of course it takes some time to melt the candles and you have to like prepare everything. But we did it in series. We made a lot of them in advance at the same time. So it saves you a lot of time if you do it in, in this way. Sure, you've got it ready to rock again. I yeah. actually use uh, an old electric rice maker because the control on it is really good. Yeah, 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 I have a control on it as well. It, yeah. it, it's really worth the money to buy it. I use it a lot. And uh, I even have, uh, because I sometimes use old candles, of course, because yeah. sometimes you have in your shop broken candles or yeah. color that just doesn't uh, sell a lot. So uh -huh. we put it all in the pan. But I also have some really small tablets. It's just white candle wax, yeah. but I have every color you want. So I can put color inside it. So I even have gold. Uh, candle wax and copper color and pink and orange every color you like so if you're interested i think look for a candle making factory or something yeah. they have yeah. all the materials for it yeah it's actually quite the basis for mine used to be from a certain uh, nordic shop <clears throat> we wouldn't name mention we won't mention names but a certain nordic shop um, you could buy literally hundreds of these things and it was very useful, especially for seminars. But yeah. you've got to be so careful when you're doing a seminar with wax. Yeah. yeah. Well, I did a lot of uh, courses for uh, housewives. Uh, you know yeah. what I mean, I think. Uh, but well, we had some dangerous things, yeah, with the candle wax before. That's true. But yeah. if you do it with the hot water, like, it's called uh, the Obey Marie technique. It's really safe. Yeah. And it's also not so hot when you put it on. Because no. This is also something you have to learn when you are working with it, because when it's really hot, it's really a bit harder to work with it. 
Yeah. And if it starts to be a little bit more colder, it's easier to put it on. Yeah. But you just have to practice it. It's the same like the hearts and making things with the drilling machine. Practice, practice, and then you get the hang of it eventually. Sure. Yeah. Great. I Yay. think that's co covered all the questions. Um, Carrie Marshall Foster is watching uh, at the moment as well. And uh, Carrie is the, the lady I was telling you who posted something on Facebook today about the shortage of roses. So she, and she's passionate about recycling, same as I am. So great, well done. Well, will I go to our next question, do you think, Hanukkah? Sorry? Will I go to the next question? Yes, no problem. Then I will get something else. Okie dokie. So our next question is, uh, and this will be number four, uh, Jonathan, the mystery man. Here he is, yeah. So with roses apparently in short supply, are you considering other flower? Oh boy, other flower options. Wow. <laughs> this is very reassuring actually. Um, because before we came on, I had a word with uh, three uh, friends of mine who are rose growers, um, all of whom are in full supply, so they're fine. But um, yeah, here you go. So the answer is 93% um, are saying they're going for, they're considering other flower options and only 7% are saying no. That's quite a substantial uh, decision there, I think. So, wow, excellent. Okay, so hopefully you're getting some ideas from Hanukkah, but if you present things in a special way um, and in a different way, I'm sure you'll be able to sell them quite easily. Can I just say at this point, a great big thank you to Nico, who is behind the camera, who's working his socks off for us. He's a, there's a, a little arm has appeared. He's a darling guy I've known for years. And um, it's just so kind. I mean, we're just so lucky that he's um, actually, <laughs> Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky to yeah. have him. Yeah. Okay. So we got something else in today, or well, to yesterday. Uh, lepidium. I Aha. think it's a very underestimated material. Uh, I've made something small here, but of course I could not resist. I made something really big with it as well. A very heavy uh, bouquet. Yeah. Um, just wanted to show you the difference you can make with it. And um, uh, I think last week I saw your um, uh, live stream with Stein, Stein yeah. Adam. And I think if, if you're interested in it, it's, it's definitely worth taking a look what he did with this beautiful material. He did beautiful work, yeah. Yeah, he did beautiful work. So I'm not diving into it too much. No. Of course, I'm going to show you the big work when I've done some explanation on these ones. But it's definitely worth a look, I think. That well, yeah, that, that, life that you had. So I think it's very nice material. Of course, if you use it in really big field bouquets, but also uh, if it's like the main thing in your arrangement. Uh, and this is actually very simple, very quick to make. You just only have to clean the bottom a bit, and then you you can just put one or two uh, branches in one vase, and then you just only have to fill it with some really nice scabiosa and some small hearts. So this is very simple and very quick to make, but I can imagine if you make a huge table yeah. with a lot of these vases yeah. made with this, I think it would be very nice and very sellable as well. Yeah. So you don't need a rose, you just need some beautiful scabiosas. Of course, you can also use the dark ones. And then we have some really nice hearts here as well. Yeah. But it's also good for uh, for uh, a gift for someone who likes green, you know, because the the, the green da dragon lepidium is actually it's quite an energizing green, I think. Yeah, it's really fresh. Very on trend. So we have here some wooden hearts. I spray painted them a little bit in a copper color. Of course, you can spray paint it in every color you like. Then I drilled a small hole in it and then put them on aluminium wire. So mm -hmm. also something you can prepare in advance, really nice. And it's very easy. You can just put it in your small vases. And of course, we're now talking about Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. 
so we have lots of hearts but i think this is also very nice for mother's day true very or for true. a wedding or whatever so yeah. it's now really focusing on valentine but i think this is very useful for many other special days in floristry yeah well i love it i think it's gorgeous and as so you, you say see if you have a lot together there'd be quite an impact yeah well that's the thing that's what we did in the shop a lot uh we just made a lot of the same things in the shop mm. but this is very simple and not, not really a technical thing but you cannot mm. always have the really big show pieces of course mm. this yeah. is why i put these two little ones here as well but i can imagine if you have a big table in your window and you have a whole forest of these it would look really beautiful as well yeah yeah i agree i think that would look spectacular great thank you okay you're welcome so shall we put on another question while you tidy your desk yeah okay here we go so uh jonathan question five so folks if you are considering different flower options are you ordering um and you can have more than one choice here lisianthus chrysanthemums uh Jip, crispidia spring flowers gibiosa um if you scroll down you'll see tulips uh gerbera veronica and lepidium so if you just oh while you're doing it you've got the hang of it so just scroll down and you can vote on all of those things as much as you, you know as you want just to give us an, a rough idea hopefully you're seeing the potential of, of adding your own personality into the designs the way hanukkah does she's so famous for so here we go oh boy oh boy wow this is very interesting oh something tiny yes there we go a little lipidium bouquet <laughs> so Oh, okay. Well, Annalise, I think it's just... just one stem. <laughs> <laughs> Annalise uh, Baldwin, I think, has just fallen off her chair. She's saying, wow. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, we will publish this later. The results on that are very interesting. Um, very interesting. People going for Lysianthus, Jip, Chrysanthemums, yeah, Gerbera, Tulips, and Spring Flowers, a big popular push on spring flowers and tulips very interesting okay kid i see you've done a miniature for me thank you so much yes. <laughs> well i actually really like the shape i love it and i think that i've used two bunches two bunches of the lepidium inside the lepidium green dragon and i think it's it's quite a heavy bouquet uh, wow. there is an, a welded frame on the inside so there's an, an iron ring here okay. and then we have some iron lines here as well but the lepidium is perfect to put uh, against a shape like this because it's really flexible ah. so it's really easy to make it so i first used one bunch to make the bottom and then later i did the same thing on the inside and of course I fix it sometimes with a little bit of bullion wire. So you cannot see it, but it's actually fixed with some um, green bullion wire to make it flat. Yeah. Because I like the strong shape. And of course we could not resist to use some beautiful flowers on top. Also some beautiful pink leaves. I'm not yeah. sure if everybody knows it, but this is something I really like a lot. Um, it's from a Dutch grower here. Uh -huh. uh, I use it a lot. I have tubes on the inside and the scabiosas, the scoop scabiosas are really long. So they are in the water. So it, it's a, it's a hand tied bouquet, but then you have some, some of the flowers and some of the leaves uh, inside with some tubes. So it's like a combination of a hand tied with some tubes because I really liked the details with Beautiful. the leaves and with the phalaenopsis absolutely beautiful yeah you like it you didn't see anything in advance eh? no it was all this time i know she kept everything secret from me she's been yeah. like a little sort of magician pulling things out of the hat so i have not seen any of this before no. um okay well you've not sally hardy on her back and mandy poon 
they're saying stunning. Stunning's coming up. We've got a question from Darina. Um, Darina saying, when you put hot wax on styrofoam, does it not damage the surface? I can answer this, but I'll let you answer. Yeah, it's no problem. Uh, this is also why I use uh, the hot water because it will never get really, really hot. hot yeah. So it doesn't melt. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. If you need any more info, Darina, ask me because I'm a past master of this stuff. So that is absolutely stunning. I agree with you, girls. Stunning. Beautiful. So, and it's actually a parallel bouquet. So I think it's always very nice if you have two beautiful binding points. Yeah. Uh, of course, it's a lot of work because I've made it with the bullion wire. Yeah. But I always use first the anchor tape, the waterproof tape. Then I fix some ribbon around it in the same color as the bullion. And then yeah. you can make a layer of bullion wire around it. If you have only bullion wire, it will take you forever to make a really nice binding point. So I always have something underneath like ribbon or uh, something that has the same color as the bullion wire. It can yeah. save you a lot of time. Yeah. Uh, and I think this, this I looks love it. also very beautiful. The, yeah. the bottom. Okay, so that's two things you're sending over to me. Because I won't get any flowers, I can tell you now. <laughs> So, and I was really surprised because I had the, a very beautiful scoop uh, scabios in this one. And I'm yeah. checking the name. Yeah, it's called Merlot Bonbon, but it has actually really long stems. So they are in the water. And I expected ah. not to have long enough stems to put them in the water next to the lepidium, but they are really long enough. So that's great. Great. Yeah. So I'm putting this one back. Okay. Okay, Jonathan, we've got another quickie then, darling. <laughs> Can you put out question six? Um, which is, if you're ordering different flowers, what colors are you ordering? So you can have multiple choices here. So pink, white, red, yellow, purple, green, mixed, over to you guys. That's just great. Absolutely fabulous. I love it. And is that something you would have had in your shop window then, Hanukkah? Yes, I would. And I have something else that I would put in my shop window. Okay. Shall I show it? Yeah, go on, girl. How, how okay. are we without time? Because this is the, the, big, the big final. We have, we are actually on time. So we've got four minutes um, and then we're going to open it to questions. Yeah. And I have a feeling we're going to get a lot of questions, darling. Yeah. So you go so for it. So uh, for the next one, it's a huge bouquet. I will tell you already in advance. The base is made out of the thick aluminium wire. Um, okay. Very, very strong base, really elegant lines. Uh, so I will try to show you a little bit how I did it and how the, the back of the bouquet looks like, but I will get it first. It's just a small one. <laughs> and when I when I showed Nico today, and he said, "Well, my cameras cannot grab the whole thing. It's too big." Because I, I always like it when you have the hearts and they have a long tail. But of yeah. course, it's a bit big for the cameras. Oh, uh, so I'm going to show it a little bit like this. Yeah. And of course, we took already beautiful pictures in the garden. So yeah. later you can see it really uh, well in the pictures. So I've used two rolls of thick aluminium wire inside to make the base. Maybe you can see it a little bit if you look at the back. Yes, let's see the back. Yeah, please. All kinds of round lines. So I think in my work, I use, of course, a lot of wire. Oh. And I use it in a really decorative way, but also technical. So it works in both ways. Uh, so this is a perfect base to use for many constructions, many bouquets. Uh, so first I made the whole frame out of the thick aluminum wire. Mm -hmm. and then I started with, I think, a couple of hundred uh, Craspedia paint poles inside. Right. So you fix them on the wire and then you start weaving them in together. Yeah. So most of them are dry in the frame, but uh -huh. they're also a couple inside the water. So it's a mix of both. Okay. And then I've used beautiful uh, flowers inside. Not too much 
uh, different ones. I've used a lot of um, Gloriosa and the beautiful Scabiosa scoop, the red ones. I really like that color. Yeah, that's I'm beautiful. Sure you can see it really well on the camera. Yeah, and then yeah. I always really like to use some beautiful leaves inside my yeah. work. And then I've used again tubes for it. So I will show you how I always work with the tubes. So I'm going to put this beauty back in the water first. Good, good. We like to keep things fresh. Yes. Okay, according to Annalise, she's now lying on the floor in shock. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> <laughs> she is, she's having fun though. And Suzanne Law, um, who's from the state, says she's loved it. She's gonna catch up when but she's had to go, she's got stuff to do. She wants to say thank you. So well, you can look at it later Suzanne. again. Eh? She's a lovely girl. Right, on the go. Oh yes, yeah. please show us this. So uh the tubes, I use these a lot mm. nowadays in my work. I make a lot of frame bouquets, but sometimes you can have the uh feeling that you miss something in a bouquet or you have a gap or something, then I always use these tubes. They are perfect for putting in uh, Valenopsis, uh, um, Cymbidiums are perfect, yeah. but also I use them a lot to put leaves in. Put leaves. And I cover them with the drilling machine with bullion wire. I sometimes ah. also spray paint them, but then it's really beautiful to look at these uh, instead of looking at the plastic thing. And Again, something I would prepare in advance. So I have like buckets filled with these in gold and copper and pink and black, whatever. So this is very nice element in your uh, designs. If you miss something, um, especially orchids and leaves like this, also this beauty, I will show it. Yeah. Uh, this one is also very beautiful to put in tubes. Uh, very beautiful color. I really like pink, of course, but they don't drink a lot. So it's fine to put them in the tube with one time water and then you don't need to replace it. So that's something you always have to keep in mind. Don't put a tulip in, a, in the tube because they will drink it in oh, one day. Oh, no, no, no. Tulip's just too thirsty. But is that a caladium? No, it's a, no, it looks a little bit the same, but it's actually a synchronium. That's the name. Wow. But it, it. It, it's quite similar, but I think this variety is much stronger because I've used them in bridal works as well, a lot. Ah. Um, and they, they will hold for a couple of days without water and they will still stay beautiful. Well, definitely not a caladium then, that's for sure. No, 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 no. no. Caladiums are really tricky sometimes. Also yeah. very beautiful, but this one is much stronger, I think. So my mm. house is always filled with these and also... Uh, the begonia leaves, these ones, the begonia spots, I have yes. in my house a lot. So every time I do something like this and I miss something special, I always make sure I have something uh, in my house to cut. It's stunning, absolutely stunning. So, and of course, um, uh, the last bouquet was a little bit big. But you can also make smaller varieties. And in my shop, we would normally put something like this in the window. And then next to this, have smaller varieties of it. And mm -hmm. we sold the smaller ones because the big one was the standing next to it. So for us, it worked really well. And I always think you always have to keep in mind, you don't sell the big items every time. Yeah. But people talk about it and they know you're a professional. So when they know uh, you can do it, they will come to you later for the bigger special things. And I think it's very good to show your talents to your clients if you yeah. have something special in the window. And I think yeah. it's really worth the time and effort you put into it. Absolutely. Okay. Well. Well. Oh yeah, there's the wire again. There's the wires. Thank you, Nico. Thank you. Nico's decided to go for a drink. Um, is it okay with you, my darling, if we now transfer on to doing a question and answer session? Um, right. You good for that? Okay. So calling uh, Betty Finkelstein and calling uh, Jonathan, etc. It takes a little bit of time for people to um, to click on. So you and I can can still talk, Hanukkah, but um, we're now opening this to a question. Oh, there's the go 
Isn't she looking gorgeous? The Betty today is looking gorgeous. So modest in orange. Orange is good for orange is good for the Netherlands. They love orange over there. Yeah, it's all <laughs> good. Darling, you need to go live. You're you on mute, Betty. You need to. Ah, up. sorry, sorry. There her, I am. There she is. Fine. Um, there's there's questions here, darling. Here we go. What are the vines in the frame? Says Christina. Christina, I need to know which particular frame we're talking about. Um. Pass the floor was in one of the frames, yeah? yeah, but I'm not sure about which frame you're asking. And I have some of these branches as well. Maybe they saw these ones because not it sure. was in the last big heart shape bouquet. Well, with... She says it's in the last one. Yeah. And now I she's think... saying, can we have a look at the design again? Of um, course. She's doing that. Um, yeah, here we go. Oh, people up mountains. How exciting. I, I just want to say that uh, when we turn you on to panelists, uh, if you are still on your pajamas, it's okay. It's not a must to open the camera. So just accept the turn over to panelists. Uh, but it will be very, very nice to see your faces and say hi. So don't be shy. Uh, here we have many ones here. Give us a few more seconds and we'll turn everyone so everyone can join. Okay. So. Okay, so Lee is now asking if you could turn the love heart around again, please, Hanukkah. The back side? Yeah, the back side, yeah. Okay. Is that is that okay, Lee? Can you see that now? So did you use vines through that love heart? That's my yeah, next it's, question. I have some rose bottle uh, branches in it. It's not really vines, it's a little bit thicker. No. Than Okay. Um, but you can use branches uh, or anything else that's really nicely bendable, bendable if you work with a frame like this. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think also, remember, she's used um, some uh, Gloriosa through it. And Gloriosa stems can look like vines as well, can't they, yeah. darling? Yeah. yeah, I've used them in round shapes as well. Yeah. So the base is first made with uh, the paintball Crispedia, a couple of uh -huh. hundred of them. And then you start weaving through with uh, your Gloriosa and uh, the Scabiosas that are inside. The scoop, uh, Scabiosas, a very nice color together with uh, the Gloriosa, I think. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Sandra. Sandra Wilson's on, looking very nice. She's had her hair done and everything, looking oh, gorgeous. Hello. <laughs> Have you any questions, Sandra? No, it's just lovely to look at. I'm not a I'm not a flower shop person. I'm I'm just an ordinary person who belongs to a garden club. Well, what's ordinary about that? So that's lovely to see. I mean, but there's no way I can get anything as big as this. But it's gorgeous to look at. Thank maybe, you so much. Can maybe ask someone to send you something as big as this. That'd be really oh, good. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Hanika, put that down because I know that's going to be heavy. Please put oh. it down. I go to the gym all the time, so I'm a bit, I'm quite strong. I know you're strong. I've shaken your hand. Yeah. <laughs> Shaking hands with Dutch florists, you sometimes lose your hand, Sandra. Really, they're so strong. I know. Yeah, yeah. They're very strong. But I can't actually see. There's only. I can see that Max van der Sluis, aka Maxi, uh, has been watching. Of but course, at the moment, yes. I can't see anybody else going live. Is anybody else? So does anyone have any questions? OK. OK, here's the next question from Lee. Lee's hiding from us because I know she's there. She's probably in pajamas. She looks good in pajamas, so does Lee. Lee um, has asked how long it took to construct the last Love Heart bouquet. Well, I think in total, it was quite fast. I think it took me three hours to make it. Excellent. Okay, so Lee has actually fessed up. She's actually not in her pajamas. She's got, she's brushed her hair and everything, put on some makeup and she's now arrived. Lee, can you switch off the mute button on your thing? That's a technical thing. See a wee mute button. See what, yeah, there's the Yay! Yay! <laughs> Lee, Thanks, three and a half hours, yeah? Uh, for me? Uh, oh, six. it took three and a half hours for Hanukkah. 
to make that. Oh, wow, fantastic. Yeah. The mechanics are, are flawless, beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. She is like that. Mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> Well, I work with in this way a lot. I work a lot with the thick aluminum wire so I can make bases with the wire really fast. But it's something you have to get the hang of. It's, it's mm -hmm. really different than making a normal hand-tied bouquet. But it, it's like my specialism, so I, I need to be fast in it as well. And I mm -hmm. travel a lot and I, I teach a lot in other countries and I, I cannot like work a full day on one frame. So you get faster yeah. and faster as you practice and practice more. I like that you reuse your your frames, you repurpose your frames. I do that all the time. Try to, to, to make it into something new, always repurposing and reinventing that base piece so it becomes uh, worth so much more. Yeah, yeah so love your work. Thing because because uh, many florists in Holland, when I give a demonstration, they say, well, I can never sell it at my shop and it's too expensive and we don't have time for it. But if you use it 10 or 15 times for something else, yeah. it, it brought you a lot of money and turnover as well. And then in the end of it, you put it in your shop and you sell it for a nice price for an opening or for a special occasion. So I, I really don't agree that it's not... Um, uh, able to sell for us. Instead. Oh no, it's worth it. And you're amortizing the cost of, of the initial labor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You amortize it over, maybe it's three years, maybe it's five years, maybe it's five months. And you but, have something special in your shop absolutely. and you can enjoy making it because I think that's very important as well. Mm -hmm. If you're a florist, you love to work with, of course, with flowers, but it's also nice to have sometimes a challenge and to make something special that like mm -hmm. makes you smile and makes you happy. Yeah, and stretches I you. I think it helps if you stretch you. I bring you tidings of great joy. Heidi has joined us in her pajamas. <laughs> She's been convinced by yours truly that PJs can look really good. So welcome, Heidi. Um, here we go. We've got more questions coming in from people hiding in the pajamas. Um, here's a really good one. I think it's Onella. It could be Lonella. What about arrangement when less is more? That's an interesting and slightly oblique question. So what they're saying is when is less, when should you stop? I think my answer to that would be when the client says, if that's your budget, that's how much you get. Okay, go for it. What yeah, do you think? Well, yeah, I think it depends a bit on, on what's the occasion. Uh, because when um, sometimes I make something uh, with only steel grass or, or for example, I can, I can grab that one, the one with the Lepidium green dragon. Uh, yeah. it's, it's actually only made with uh, the Lepidium and just a small uh, arrangement of flowers in the middle in a really nice shape. I will grab it. Grab it. And then, of course, Hi, Sarah. for something like this, uh, less is more is a very good example but because even without flowers it would be beautiful yeah uh, so yeah. this would be a very good example but if you have a really uh, big bouquet and you want to have a lot of colors and a really nice explosion of colors inside then you can have some extra things in it and in my experience uh, sometimes really uh, people can have the tendency to put too much different techniques yeah. in uh, one arrangement. So uh, they want to show everything they can yeah. do mm -hmm. in one arrangement. And then it will be too um, cluttered and too much. Yeah. So, But it's really yeah. hard to find a balance, uh, especially when you just start as a florist. It's really hard to find a balance. Uh, I teach a lot in schools and I can see the young florists like adding techniques and adding techniques and adding techniques in one arrangement. And in the end, you don't see anything anymore. But it's also a matter of experience, I think. To be honest, as a judge, you know, quite often I've gone along the line with other judges and we've turned to one another and said, so how many seminars or workshops do you think this candidate has been to? <laughs> and they've tried to include every single technique we've learned in these various yeah. things. And that never works. It just, you need to keep the focus up. Sarah, nice to welcome you. Have you a question for us, darling? You have to switch on. You see this? Yeah, there she is. 
I haven't got any specific question apart from just to say lovely, fantastic. Oh, oh great. That's very kind. Thank you so much. Please Alison, can, can I say something about that last bouquet? The, the last bouquet that was done. So with, when, when somebody says less is more, when most people would look at that bouquet, they would not think that it's well, only two yeah, bunches. I think that's probably that it's so much more dramatic. It looks like it could be 10 bunches, but it's like, um, like she said, it's uh, expertise. It's the, uh, it's the, the knowledge and how you actually put something good. together. I'm just uh, yeah. Can I kindly ask to mute whoever is not world. talking? Uh, Sue, Sue yeah. Lovelace, can you, uh, you seem to be talking, but oh, yeah. we, we oh. can't actually see you. We, all we're seeing is a very strange icon, actually. So, Sue, have you got a question? Sue? Okay, so Sue needs to get back into her PJs again and go back to sleep. That's <laughs> absolutely fine. No problem here. No, it's absolutely true about what you were saying about, oh my goodness, the screen keeps changing. But what you were saying, Hanukkah, about the, the green dragon, the, the lepidium, is yes, as Lee says, it's too much. That's all it is. And, yeah. and it just takes craftsmanship to make it look like that. And you must always remember how much time and effort have gone into making that. Yeah, but look but how spectacular it is. Yeah, but actually I think it took me not that long because I had no. a very good frame in it. And it, yeah. the only thing that took a little time is to clean the bottom because uh, from this, I think half of it is like naked stems without the leaves and it has quite some leaves so i needed to clean it first but yeah. then i had a pile of the lepidium on my table and i just took the frame and then i can just push them under the frame because they have uh, a really nice line in them already so it was quite easy to make it quite fast mm -hmm. so you have a lot of uh, like wow effect and yeah. something you can make quite fast with uh, the lepidium green dragon in this way it would be great for a hotel entrance, wouldn't it? You know, it'd be absolutely stunning in the right location on the right table. It would be absolutely, I mean, I just- yeah, I think if you have it on the table and you look, because I think the bottom is actually maybe even more interesting yeah. to look at, like the, the, the shape. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, because I really love the shape with the parallel and then going up and that it's really flat. And, and I think this Lepidium is an amazing, very great product for a frame yeah. and for a shape like this. It's interesting because people ask me, um, because the decision is, is really mine. I think the girls from uh, Dancing Girl agree to that, but they ask me why or how I choose the people to invite to do the webinars. I think you're kind of getting the answer now, just listening to <laughs> Hannah and I can talk for hours. Hours and hours. Hours and hours and hours. It's the same as, you know, I think what's essential is that people are passionate about what they do, that they are knowledgeable about what they do. Um, and it's my great pleasure to um, encourage and support Hanukkah to get a, a more global perspective because shit as heck the Dutch deserve to have you you're, you're a national treasure they just mm -hmm. haven't recognized it necessarily but they do know they do know ah oh, sweetie pie you can uh, give me that bouquet send the bouquet send the bouquet <laughs> <laughs> send the bouquet <laughs> <laughs> okay any other questions people I'm going to go to page two there's so many people. Okay, right. I'm assuming that's the question's over. Hanukkah, it's been an absolute blooming joy. Actually, do you know what's really good for me is? Um, I'm still in lockdown here. Just seeing people and talking to people is just so exciting. So um, please stay safe, everybody, and thanks for joining us, yeah? Yes, thank you, everybody, for watching. And we made beautiful pictures already, so we're going to post a lot in the upcoming days uh, on my own page, but also at the page from Danseren. And I would like to thank everybody from Danseren and, of course, Alison, my favorite moderator, of course. Annika, uh, thank you. You were amazing. And you thank had you a wonderful... Designs. 
Yeah, the design were, it was a surprise, as Alison said, because we never saw anything before the webinar and it was amazing. Really, right. really. Uh, thank you very much. I think that the session was very, very interesting. I learned a lot. Good. Uh, and uh, I wish you all a happy Valentine. Yes. And I hope that every one of us will receive something like that, even smaller. No, don't hold your breath <laughs> over here. Not in Bradley Kingdom. No, 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 no. <laughs> a girl can be optimistic, you know, Alison. Yeah, well, you know, suddenly a flash of lightning came through the sky. No, it's not going to happen. <laughs> anyway, I, God bless and everybody stay safe, yeah? And if you're from the Far East, uh, Happy New Year next week. And, um, yeah, I may be called Mama Bear in most of the western world but i am actually a dragon <laughs> when i was in china and they said oh you're a dragon and they're going mm, like this and i said oh you mean fiery mouth and they said no wise clever <laughs> oh let me just say one thing she doesn't know why her camera is not working but claudia from romania is sending you her love oh, hi claudia little oh. claudia yeah I Thank you so much for all these great ideas. It was great to see you again. Kisses for everybody. Many kisses back. Lots of kisses. Uh, I, I uh, think she can hear us, but that's it. I just want to say that everything will be available. All the pictures and the webinar itself, the link to the webinar will be available on Dancing Girl Live. Okay. Uh, and of course, if you have any more questions, feel free to ask them uh, there and we'll make sure to answer. And uh, I hope to see you all on our next webinar as well. Yeah. Thank you. Bye, folks. Thank Bye, you. Ready. Bye.